Hi, welcome back. Josiah so, Sweet. D Lake. D Lake. Think we have Lake. Um, next video we're doing is how what what the transitions look like in a house. Uh, for kind of like an overview, we're definitely going to do a video later that goes over a full sales presentation in the house. So that way you can see it, you can see our flip chart, you can see everything that we're going over with somebody. Um, but how I like to break down a house is from individual sales that lead to the full sale. Right. And so what I mean by that, we talked about in a separate video about door knocking and how to get in. That's your first sale. You're breaking that's, the ice. That's right. So you're, you're getting in the house. I made my first sale. Check. I've gotten in the house. I'm sitting down with them on the couch. I'm sitting in the dining room. Um, the next sale that you're going to be making is core, right? right? So what's core mean? Um, I don't really know. Put it out of my father's children, <laughs> occupation, children, occupation, recreation, and emotion. Yeah, emotion. Let's go. There you go. We All right. It. So that's what core is. Um, <laughs> education or emotion. It can really be either one. Right. Um, but you, he, we do that naturally. Um, when we get into a house, I'm kind of thinking of it as an icebreaker. Right. I'm sitting down with them. I'm making some jokes. I'm looking at pictures on the wall. Oh, man, Miss Betty, is that your granddaughter right there? That's awesome. So she plays soccer here. I bet you go to all those games, don't you? Now, she's, she's actually having a conversation with me and looking at me as something other than just a salesperson right. trying to get something out of her. And it, it sounds really cliche, but it's like once you do it in every house, it starts to it just happen. It just happens. Like I'm my like, favorite, my go to is how long you been living in this area? Exactly. <laughs> how long you, how every long, house, every house. So how long you been living in this area? Awesome. So oh cool. So you've been in this area for a while. What did you do for work? Because um, you obviously, I'm sure you worked at some point during this time of your life. <laughs> right. um, and then they're gonna go over their work and they're gonna be talking about things that they have interest in. That's right. your whole thing. And try to common find your ground. common ground. Common ground. So we're trying to talk about their. Their children. Um, obviously, we just talked about occupation, how long they've lived there. Um, and, and one thing I'll do once I got their children's name, and this is kind of for like the end of the sale. Once, once you pull out your pitch pad, I'll kind of put. I've been able figured out that they, this, their child's going to be their beneficiary. Yeah. So what I'll do with the gold, silver, bronze is I put for Brittany or for whoever their daughter is. That's right. To remind them. To, to remind them. That's kind of an emotional appeal as well. Yep, that's where you're picking up some emotion. Um, one of the, and I'll kind of get to that this question in a while of what, what I do emotion-wise, but um, first sale, get in the house. Second sale, get them to like you. That's finding common ground. Get them to look at you as something other than a salesperson. Right. Your next sale is selling them on your knowledge. So that's when you're getting in into your presentation, um, talking about your knowledge and insurance and what you're there to help them out with. You gotta, you gotta feel like you know what you're talking about or uh, sound like you know what you're talking about so that they can feel that. Um, the next sale after you've gotten them to understand your knowledge is selling them on letting you know their situation. Mm -hmm. Whether that's they don't have insurance, they do have insurance, they're their overpaying. premiums just changed, they've overpaying, what the name of the company is, what they're paying, right. um, how much coverage it is, everything. You, you're kind of just jotting all this stuff down. It's making it, all you're doing is just building, you're just building up, you're basically building up for the clothes. Yeah, you're building with up. With all this information. And it's a process. So if I'm knowing I've got a process that I'm following in a house, from start to finish, I know where I'm going next. Right. All right, I've gotten them to like me. All right, I've shown them that I know what I'm talking about. All right, now they should, I know where I'm going next. I need to find out their situation. Right. So practice what your transitional um, sentences might look like to transition from knowledge to finding out the situation. Right. Um, so it should be easy because if they trust you, they like you, they're they going to tell, they're, they're tell you everything. Oh, I got term. Yeah, I got term, right? I, I, my I insurance keep go going up my, on me. Yeah, I need to go get my policy or Any, I took it out through the mail. Or anything. 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 I, need, I need, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. I need some money. I need help. I need financial help. Yeah. Okay, well, you got a whole life policy, so go see what we can do. Yep. So, all right, now their situation. We've sold them on letting us, uh, letting us see what their situation looks like. The next sale is selling them what your solution is. So you better have multiple products. 
you better know what you're talking about. And you better have something that makes sense. Because if I'm looking at Miss Betty and I'm saying, Miss Betty, you've got a $10,000 life insurance policy you've had for five years. I've got this $10,000 one. It's only $10 more a month. What do you think? Let's take it out, right? So, <laughs> she's going to be like, Yeah, what? she's going to look at you and she's. So make sure you're doing your practice before you're trying to. So you should already know the solution as soon as they tell you the problems. And that's based off of educating yourself and that's then right. educating them on what they have. And then it's really, it, it gets really simple. They tell you they got term. You've already explained term to them before that. And the easiest thing in the world to do is to call the insurance company that they have their insurance with and get their insurance company to go over exactly what they have. And then that's where your opportunity comes in where you have the opportunity to not only be the educated one, but to ask the hard questions that are going to make the client realize what's really happening in that policy down the road. If it's term, if it's UL, or if it's just an accidental policy, or if it's a whole life with a two-year wait. They need to know what's going on, right. and you're there to ask the pain point, pr pr pain point questions to be able to find the solution. But like I said earlier, you should already know the solution. You're presenting your solution now. So that's your next sale. If you're not confident, you don't have a good solution, chances are you're not making it past that part of the sale. Right. That's probably your toughest part of the sale um, because that's really where the close comes in right. is you're selling them on your fix to their situation. And so you've got to get them on board with seeing and understanding how you're going to help them because if they don't see it, they don't understand it, they're not going to do it. And so after, all right, let's move on. Now let's say they have been sold on your solution. The next sale that you're going to make is getting their personal information like social security, bank account, date of birth, uh, beneficiaries information because you got to fill out the application and you've got to do the underwriting portion of the policy whether you're doing phone health interviews or e-apps right. um, and you're also trying to find out and you, you should have already kind of find out but their health and medicines and stuff like that because you got to make sure they're going to qualify for what you're going to be able to help them out with right. and so that's really the next sale um, going from there it's the the gentle goodbye, you've already written the policy, um, make a clean break. Sometimes new agents and, and, and even seasoned agents, they'll get stuck in a house for 45 minutes after they write an app. Don't do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like they're going to talk to you because they, they don't have anybody to talk to. And now they think, like, you guys are best friends, right? Yeah. But So they're going to try to talk to you. But you just got to find a way, like you said, just to easy transition to get get yourself out of the house. Well, Miss Jones, I can sit here and talk to you all day. I'm glad I was I'm glad I was able to help you, but you know there's thirty other people in the area I gotta go try to help and so one of the biggest things that I use because I, I want them to think that I'm helping a lot of people in the area right. and that I've got a lot of other folks that need me to see them because of my expertise. Mm -hmm. You've already made the sale, they already like you. Don't feel like you have to stay after forty five minutes to a big cool down to make sure that you're not going to lose that business. You should have figured that all, all that out through your presentation, right. through that hour long, hour and a half long presentation. And so when I'm getting out of the house, one of the things I use is, oh, look at that, Miss Smith. It's it's about 3:45. I've got a four o'clock coming up um, that I really don't want to be late to. I really enjoyed our time. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You have my business card. Thank if you. you need to contact me. You just give me a call and I'm here for you. And that's my personal number. It's not the office phone. So that's I'll right. always have it on me. And you got to, when you fill out these cards, it goes to a lot of different agencies. So there's going to be a lot of different agents that are going to come knock on your door. But just know I got 30 different companies who I'm affiliated with. And I put you in the best product for your age and your health. So there's nothing that another agent is going to be able to do for you. So if anybody else comes to your door, make sure that you tell them that you're satisfied with what you have. That's right. And if they keep pressuring you, give them my business card and say them to call me, and I'll explain to them that you're in the best product for you. That's right. And so that, and, and this is part of the close, what he just did, or not close, but part of the uh, cool down, get out. Um, that's what he's saying to lead up to getting out of the house. One of the, the phrases that I always use with clients is I say, Miss Smith, do me a favor. I'm not naive. I know you're only 65 years old and you've got a lot of life left to live. Um, there's going to be somebody else that comes and talks to you about insurance at your life, in your life. I just want you to do me a favor. If they do come and talk to you, 
I'm not going to tell you you can't talk to anybody. That's totally up to you. I hope you feel like I helped you. Um, but if they're not willing to put me on speakerphone in the middle of that table and listen to what they're trying to sell you on, how they're going to better your situation, then you don't need to trust that person um, whatsoever because I, I feel like I, and know I did, really help you into a great situation. And I want to make sure that they're not going to put you into something or misrepresent your health on a policy that might put you in a worse situation. Right, yeah. So that's very, I, I get a lot of um, retention stays good because of that. So right. I like that. But all right, guys, we, uh, that's all we got on that. You guys stay blessed. Have a